Hi Ron, Chris here. So I am taking a look at another Sabre and SSD that they sent out to me. Now recently I did review the Rocket Q with a huge, massive capacity up to eight terabytes. And yes, yet again, I am holding another eight terabytes here in my hand, which is just unbelievable. So really this is an external version of the Rocket Q. It's called the Rocket Extreme Q. And this one supports very quick Thunderbolt 3 for maximum transfer speeds. Now Sabrent say that this should be able to get up to 2700 megabytes per second via Thunderbolt 3. And with USB speeds, well, it should top out and we should get a transfer maximum of around 900 megabytes per second. And as you'll see in this review, I'm actually getting over their claim speeds, which is great to see. This is all packaging we get here. So the Rocket Extreme Q, this one is using QLC. That's how they managed to cram in this particular model. I've got the eight terabytes, of which you get 7.27 terabytes free to use. So that is a huge capacity. And yes, it does come at a cost. This is retailing the eight terabyte version for I think about 1600 US dollars. So it is in this metal case really well protected. So you don't have to worry about it getting damaged in transit. The first thing you come across is this right here. They have this little slip in here to enable the maximum performance in Windows. They recommend doing this. So in the device manager, you need to find it under disk drives and then in the policies, just set it to the better performance and the enable write caching on the device. Make sure you tick that as well. Then you'll get the full speeds. Of course, you need to be using Thunderbolt 3 to get the maximum speeds out of this particular drive. Now here it is. Quite a nice size. Now I have weighed this. It does weigh just 127 grams, which is probably actually a little bit heavier than you were expecting because it's a solid metal casing around this. We see we do have the logo right there at the top. Now underneath this, I believe is maybe a screw because they do have, it's a 2280 NVMe drive that is inside this. And then it's got a thermal pad over the top of it. So very solid build to it. Really nice. In the back of it, we've got these two solid rubber feet. And right at the front, that is, of course, the Type-C connector or Thunderbolt 3. And then if you look at the very front of it, there's a tiny little cutout, a little hole there, which is a status LED. Then inside here, you will find all of our cables. So we're going to have a Type-C to Type-C or Thunderbolt to Thunderbolt 3 cable. And then they've also got a Type-A to type C cable there as well. So the cables we need, no drivers or anything is needed. You simply just plug this drive into your Windows 10 laptop and preferably Thunderbolt 3, of course. Let's have a look now at the performance of this. Now I will briefly and quickly show you how to get the maximum performance. So they show you how to do that with that little slip, but I'll just work you through it here very quickly. So you right click and you go to device manager here in Windows 10, of course. So you bring this up and you want to go to disk drives, okay? So tap there to expand the menu, find the Sabrent Rocket Extreme Q, and then right click it and then properties. And the policies tab is the one you want, like they show you on that piece of paper. It's very straightforward. Better performance, check that. Enable write caching on the device and hit OK, and I do recommend rebooting to make sure you're gonna be getting those maximum speeds out of it. So to save a bit of time here, I have benchmarked this drive. So we'll look at the different speeds that you can expect out of this. So the ATTO disk benchmark result shows we are getting above the claim from Sabrent. So Sabrent say that when you're connected up with Thunderbolt 3, you should be able to get over 2.7 gigabits per second. And you can see here that I am getting 2.89. So that is great. We're getting over those speeds. Now, if we look at Crystal Disk Mark 7, there is a difference here, okay? This is normal. So it's showing it a little bit less here, but still extremely good speeds. This is really fast for a external drive, of course, taking advantage of that much quicker 40 gigabits per second at Thunderbolt 3 supports. Now, if you do plug it into 10 gigabit per second, USB 3.1 or 3.2 that I have here with my particular PC. Uh, this will then give you these speeds here. So they claim 900 megabytes per second sequential transfers. And I am getting with writes over that, just over and with the reads over again. So that is great. We're actually getting over their claims with this particular drive. It is a very quick and of course that super large capacity with this particular one. Now, if you're a little concerned, 
about, well, what is the reliability of this drive? Well, it is using inside the internals is in fact a Rocket Q NVMe drive. And these ones, well, they've got very good reliability figures when you take a look at it. So they do have a mean time before failure. This particular capacity, in fact, all the capacities are the same, of 1.8 million hours. That's a lot. Okay, mean time before failure. A five-year warranty as well. I believe this one has two. And then the total terabytes written, this is 1,800 terabytes. That is a lot, but this is only, of course, with the eight terabyte model I have, the most expensive one from them. The other models you can see is a lot less there, so it depends. So that's why we don't also get the full kind of capacity there. I think they do allocate about 10% to over provisioning, because when you look at it, you are going to have about 7.27 free on that. And you can see right there, that's, I've already got a few files on there. So what I'm going to do is transfer some files over now. And I already copied some over because I just wanted to get it a little bit warm first, just to show you what happens when you transfer a lot of files over. So under my files here, I've got quite a bit. I've got 81 gigabytes here. I want to see how fast this is. This is currently connected up Thunderbolt 3. So copy that, paste it over to the drive, and we'll see how this little real world test, how fast it's going to be. So you can see it's starting out really good, and it will sort of bounce up and down a little bit here. That is kind of normal. And the drive itself, it does get quite warm. Now, SSDs, all the NVMe SSDs do get hot. You see a lot of manufacturers using thermal pads and heat sinks on top of them. And this, basically, the case is an external huge heat sink. So it's dissipating that heat very well. And it's maintaining around 1.5 to 1.6, you can see there. So that's very quick. Okay, so now in my few days of using this drive, it's still hard to believe that I'm holding right here in my hand eight terabytes of data. That is just absolutely crazy. Well, the capacity of it. So yes, aimed at professionals and definitely for people that have Thunderbolt 3 tech around. So if you plan to say, back up your laptop or your work PC, it's got to really have that Thunderbolt 3 to take advantage of the full speeds of this. So it was great to see that I am seeing peak transfer speeds of over their claim of that 2,700 megabytes per second. I'm getting around 2,900 megabytes per second maximum. And those, yes, are burst kind of rates that you get, those maximum transfers. Long extended transfers, you will see as I showed you, it will then throttle down a little bit. Now, this is normal, that's how SSDs are going to work, of course. Now, if you happen to be using this as well for just USB 3 devices out there, say USB 3.1 or 3.2, your Gen 2, uh, then you're gonna get transfer speeds of, I'm seeing around 1,000 megabytes per second peaks again, which is not bad. Now to the touch, it does get quite warm. Now I showed you temperatures up to about, what was it, 45 degrees C, but it will get up to about 48 to 49 for extended periods of use. But again, that is actually normal. And for an SSD, an NVMe one, that is not a bad temperature at all because this whole outer casing, it's very solid, that 127 grams that I mentioned has an excellent build quality, but it's a massive passive heatsink for this, and that is why it is getting warm. Now, internal temperatures are running an SSD like an NVMe one inside my laptop or inside my PC, we'll see temperatures of around sometimes 70 degrees Celsius or above. So this is actually running quite cool. So overall, it is a great SSD for those that need the speed, the capacity, the Thunderbolt 3 support. However, it doesn't come cheap, of course, especially at the eight terabytes. This one is retailing, I see on Amazon for about 1600 US dollars. But of course, you can get the four terabyte or two terabyte models that are a lot cheaper if you don't need the eight terabytes. So thank you so much for watching this review. And I hope to see you back in the channel in the next up and coming videos that I'm currently working on.